Well, folks, looks like I gotta remake the video. I forgot to put my microphone up to my mouth. <laughs> anyway, Star Trek Picard. Everybody knows I'm a Star Trek fan, and I like to see the modern writers have really gone off the deep edge in season two of Star Trek Picard. Now, it's gonna be a little bit of a spoiler here, so you're gonna have to uh, bear with me a little bit. Uh, anyway, in this in this season, and and this th this will get to the title. Trust me, it's it's just the writers are not even trying to hide their agenda. In this season, it starts out with you know, course in space, anomaly, and they find this anomaly, and it's it's transmitting through this. Spatial rift. Picard, help us. Picard, help us. So anyway, they have to call Picard out of retirement. He runs out there. Well, he doesn't run. He transports out there. Anyway, this thing comes through. I'm not going to entirely ruin it for you. But anyway, something comes through. And it's like, oh, my goodness. It's, uh, it's, ah, well, it's the Borg. Anyway. From an alternate reality, and anyway, they're gonna take up. They're fixing to take over all of the Starfleet and everything. So they're gonna destroy the Stargazer. And anyway, right at the second of the self-destruct, you know, they flash away, and Picard's sitting back on his balcony of his vineyard, uh, Chateau Picard, or whatever you want to call it, and. Uh, Anyway, at that time, it's like Q. Remember, Q pops in. So, uh, it is going to, uh, at that time, it's like, oh, we're in a, I have brought you to an alternate reality where it's like uh, Picard is the ultimate warrior killer. He kills everybody, you know. Anything that's not human, he kills it and defeats it. You know, the standard, you know, alternate evil Picard. So Picard's there, and of course his helping actors go back with him. But anyway, so, uh, you know, here's the first clue. And he goes out on the veranda, and they look at the sky, and the sky is like a force field, you know, because the humans in that timeline, they had destroyed the planet and, you know, ruined the atmosphere, so they had to erect a force field to keep everybody alive. And... Uh, Anyway, <clears throat> so they they go on and and then it then it, you know of course seven of nine and all of them are back too. So they they on episode two they figure out what date what date caused all this to change their timeline. Well, it was twenty twenty four. So whatever they do, they have to go back to twenty twenty four. To change whatever happened in history so it'll set everything right again so the whole world won't become uh, fascist uh, racist <laughs> uh, and uh, you know it won't destroy our atmosphere so whatever it is whatever happens it happens in 2024 now for all of us living in the real world we all know what happens in 2024 well, anyway so I don't know how they're going to write it in there, but somehow or another they're going to have to have somebody play the part of Orange Man. We got to stop the. <laughs> We're going to have to stop Donald J. Trump from winning the 2024 election, so that the whole world would be peaches and skittles and rainbows. <laughs> I'm sure that they'll come up with some other uh, antagonist to play the part of Trump, but. You, you, if you watch this and you see where they're going, you can see they're being in your face pretty obvious of where this is going because it just happens to be 2024. It's not, it couldn't be 2025, couldn't be 2026. No, they have to go back to 2024. So they're going to, uh, apparently something is going to play the part of, the presidential election, it'll probably be some undercover alien or something with blonde orange hair or orange 
whatever. <laughs> so this this is going to be a really interesting season to see what happens because I always find it funny if they can make a comedy out of any time somebody in Star Trek goes back in time, just like they did uh, the voyage home with Spock, you know, where they had to get the humpback whale. I mean, when you get these people with a modern, you know, not modern, but future technology come back to visit us now, it's always hilarious. I always find it a very entertaining thing, but I am just waiting to see what the Tards at Paramount Studios are going to come up with for a reason why everything has to happen in 2024. It's Star Trek, so Picard is coming back in time in 2024 to rescue us from Orange Man is my best guess. So Orange Man bad, you know. Uh, so he's going to save the planet. You know, we can't have, uh, you know, you know, of course, aliens, you know, are always, always the good guys. We're, we can't, uh, can't ever be bad. So it's, it's going to be interesting. I, I encourage everybody to watch it, you know, and, uh, it's not that I'm trying to promote the libtardness, but here, here's the thing. I'm kind of a watchman when it comes to religious types. And if I don't watch what these tards are doing, you'll never know. It's like you can't be an ostrich with your head in the sand. You have to watch. And I find some of this uh, sub. They, I'm sure the people in, in uh, California think this is subliminal. They're they're putting the idea, the seed. And some. And I imagine those people out there. There are idiots out there that believe this crap. But. Uh, yeah, this is this is going to be a hilarious season. I want to see how the liberals come up with uh, writing uh, the 2024 scenario into saving the world. <laughs> anyway, it, we already know what it is. If if we have nationalism, that's bad. We got to be globalist. And like I've said many times, if every nation was nationalist, it would be fine. It's just like a football team. For y'all over there overseas watching it, it might be a soccer team. If each nation was a soccer team, the president is nothing more than the coach. And each of our teams, each of our football teams compete against each other. That's the capitalist way. You know, we're competing. Now, of course, there are referees in there. We'll call the, the election, the democratic process, the referee. Okay, we got referees, we got different teams, and there's nothing wrong with the American team being the coach for the American team being USA number one. Nothing wrong with that. Just like Russia, Putin, his, he's the coach of the Russian team. You, Russia, number one. China's going, yeah, China, number one. It, it's just like a big sports thing, but, you know, Everybody wants to get bent out of shape about it. <sighs> you know what I've always wanted? I always wanted to see Spock explain the logic of homosexuality. <laughs> because I'm going to take off my glasses so y'all can see my eyes. Every one of you watching this, even if your dog and your cats are watching me on screen right now, every one of you got here because of male and female. All of you. Every single one of you. Even if you came out of a test tube, the male sperm had to go with the female egg. And they came together. Anything else is illogical. So, anyway, that's, that's my Vulcan logic for all of this. So, y'all watch Picard and see if, see if you don't see it. I mean, I already seen it in the first two episodes. This is, I mean, it's too coincidental that they're they're showing the planet being destroyed. They're showing the fascist, you know, the the evil empire, the the confederation is what they call it. the confederation has taken over, and it all happened in 2024. 
They got to save us from 2024, folks. So Picard is going to save us from Orange Man because everybody knows that Orange Man bad. <laughs>